Hey folks, good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on the live stream. Got that uh, fired back up. It just went down here suspiciously about half an hour or so ago. Appreciate uh, those letting me know that the stream went down. But we are up back on this Thursday night, June 22nd, 2023. It's about 8.41 p.m. The latest quake looks like 1.3 up here into the Alaska area. Uh, let's see what we got for movement across the area today. Looks like a little bit of activity across the west coast in the northern California. I got one earthquake in the last hour. Uh, zoom in in, zooming in here, 2.0 near Ferndale, 18 kilometers deep. This area has been shown some uh, interesting activity up here. Uh, this is the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, on that note, we're going to go check out the Cascadia subduction zone trimmer. And it looks like maybe uh, 39 epicenters here of trimmer for a total tally uh, throughout the day today. Nothing big, just a small amount of trimmer activity uh, up around Washington and uh, Northern California area. Uh, still seeing a little bit of activity across the Reno area. This has been swarming off and on, not for sure what it's pointing to. Uh, there is a fault system, a couple different faults that run through up here. And Reno does have some historical data as uh, far as having some six pointers, 6.0 um, magnitude earthquakes historically. Uh, it's been a little while, so you might have to watch some of these fault systems up there across that area when we see these little separate swarms going on. Uh, rest of California, uh, a little bit of movement across the Ridgecrest area and the creeping segment here of the San Andreas Fault. And Southern California, not a whole lot going on down here. This has been our quiet zone here for quite a while. Uh, looks like we did have a 2.1 just off the plate boundary, but overall, seismic activity at or just below background levels. Uh, outside of the Mount Rainier area, got a 2.6 here in the mountains. Uh, definitely a ways away from Mount Rainier. Don't believe that's associated with the uh, volcano itself. Over here across the Intermountain West regions, uh, Yellowstone looks pretty quiet. And uh, the rest of the country here... Getting in on some swarming out in Texas once again. Most of this activity this morning that is out into the big time oil fields out here across the desert of Texas. I don't think it looks like this right now. It's probably pretty green with all the rain they've seen. Um, but uh, yeah, a little bit of activity out there in the oil fields. There's the wastewater disposal ponds. Quite a few of them. Let's see if I can get through this update with, without getting shut down again. I don't know what's going on here. But uh, I think that's about the second or third time in a week that the stream's gone down suspiciously. But this time, um, early. Most of the time, it's about 3 o'clock in the morning, so a little odd. Oklahoma area, seeing some movement out there as well. Some small microquakes. All right, looking at the big picture out here. Across areas of the Pacific. Looks like Japan. Most of the movement here into the Japan area was from this morning. I don't believe we've had any further earthquake activity since then. Uh, most of the movement, for the most part, has shifted down south here across the Indonesia area. Philippines south into the Indonesia islands, where we are seeing um, a pretty good swarm of activity here in the 4 and 3 range. It looks like Australia had a, a 2.7 down here. Not showing up on the USGS map, uh, but that is on the Earthquake 3D globe here. As you can see, being reported by the EMSC models from the Geoscience Australia folks there. Uh, about 10 kilometers deep. Not a big earthquake whatsoever, but uh, seeing a little bit of movement out there across Australia. Here's their map. I um, haven't really visited this government site there all that often, but uh, pretty cool. They monitor, obviously, uh, worldwide activity as well. Similar to the USGS, uh, but, it, but in its own... Uh, entity i would say but there's that earthquake uh i believe that's the one right here in the red i'll have to come back and look at that it's actually a pretty interesting map all right uh, across the samoa area south uh latest quake shows a 4.5 here 41 kilometers deep away from our swarming region that area is still swarming um although backing off slightly here latest quake in the swarm area looks like about noon today with a 5.1 North of the Kermadec Islands, not a whole lot going on across New Zealand here, at least according to the USGS. 
and the EMSC not showing a whole lot either. Um, I don't know if uh, Australia picks up on this or not, but I don't see any earthquake activity showing up there on their map either. Let's see what we got for the GeoNet servers here. Looks like 11 hours ago was the last earthquake, a 2.5. Um, not going to go into all the small microquakes, but we'll check out the drums here across New Zealand. And looks like a little bitty one there across North Island. Nothing major going on that I can see. No major swarm activity, no uh, major movement across any of the seismograph drums there across New Zealand for now. Big Island of, of Hawaii. Looks like most of the movement here across the Pahala area. Nothing big showing up. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the hazard notification system. I think it's probably the same one from this morning, just letting us know that uh, it's currently paused. Kilauea volcano eruption currently paused uh, here a couple days ago, Monday afternoon. So just kind of waiting on that. Um, I think uh, we should see things kick back up here shortly across that area as far as the eruptive status goes and uh, with the Kilauea volcano. Uh, over here around Turkey area, looks like a 4.0 from last night. I know we have some further movement here on the Earthquake 3D globe, including a 2.4. Uh, one of the latest quakes here on the map. Some twos out there across the Mediterranean today, also off the coast here uh, with a 2.0. We'll see exactly where that's at. Canary Islands area, it's like about 38 kilometers deep. Uh, let's see, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty calm, pretty clear, pretty quiet for now, as far as earthquake activity goes. Not a whole lot happening. Uh, Middle America Trench, though, looks slightly active. It's going to be this region right here along this plate boundary. That includes Mexico southward here, all across the uh, this plate boundary. Very active. They did have a 4.9, which USGS is picking up here near the Nicaragua area, just offshore, about 35 kilometers deep. Uh, but as you can see here on the globe, it's much more active than the, that one single lonesome earthquake there on the USGS map. So elevated movement across this area. With that uh, happening, that could stir up some further activity here across the Puerto Rico region. We'll keep an eye on this area as well. Latest a 3.6 here, just uh, around the Mona Seamount, kind of close here to the Puerto Rico Trench. Space weather activity here tonight. We did have a M flare kick up here. Pretty large one. Looks like an M4.9 from 3341. That's our lucky sunspot. Well, I can't say lucky spun sunspot number, but uh, looks like some type of error going on here with a solar ham net site. 3341 is going to be the sunspot here. Uh, it has been relatively active, and that's... Uh, I think that's the main one that we said to watch, and sure enough, it's uh, blasting off some M flares. Getting a newer sunspot up here developing. I'll have to keep an eye on that one. It looks like it's rapidly intensifying. Uh, but for the most part, um, you know, this area here, 3341, maybe this region, and the newer sunspot area worthy of keeping, uh, keeping an eye on as far as large flaring goes. Uh, looks like we are coming down slightly from that M flare that kicked up, or we could be, uh, actually it looks like we're witnessing a little C flare activity right now. There's the M flare on the X-ray flux chart. Not for sure why this isn't working, but uh, it's not. I'm sure uh, Kevin will get to it. Either way, a 99% chance for C flare, M flare at 40, X flare around 10% chance. And uh, with these active regions currently facing Earth, uh, that's uh, a good number, I think, to um, to have up here on the board. Never know. Could see uh, another X flare, depending on uh, what the sun currently wants to do. Either way, here's a, that C flare that's kind of blasting off here from, oh, what is that, 3327 up here? Notice the complex structure within these. So we got this uh, area here. 3341 and 3345. We got three, at least three here of uh, all these numerous sunspots to watch for some further flaring. Uh, no major aurora forecast here tonight, looks like. Uh, things are pretty green, fairly green, I should say.
Uh, there is the M flare he mentioned here, 3341. Uh, it looks like a coronal mass ejection will be likely associated with this event. So far, most of the plasma appears to be headed to the south, uh, but we'll keep an eye on that, see if uh, we get a glancing blow from that uh, CME. Probably not, though, with that position on the sun and uh, kind of facing away from the earth, but you never know. We'll keep, keep you guys updated here. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, well, uh, let's see, current day two activity. It looks like a little bit of enhanced risk up into the Northern Plains and also up into the Wyoming area. Got a little slight chance here for tornado possibilities uh, as we head into tomorrow. So we'll check this first thing in the morning. Uh, looks like right now main threat's gonna be some, uh, some hail and some uh, wind gusts out there. Uh, looking at the assembles here for the states, of course, California dealing with some cooler weather. I think we hit about 83 degrees today here in Northern California. That's still about 13 degrees below normal. And that's thanks to this uh, low pressure trough out here along the West Coast, keeping things nice and cool here in California. That's going to slowly disintegrate here. Uh, looks like areas around the Great Lakes and portions of the eastern uh, parts of the country will be getting some relief as that low pressure system kind of splits and shifts over here well eastward. Uh, it does though, looks like we are going to, uh, looks like maybe another intensifying low pressure system here towards the beginning of next week uh, will keep us below normal. But I know we have some hot temperatures coming. I was looking at the extended forecast here and it looks like at least into the first week of July uh, things are going to be getting a little warm here into the west coast area that is all right uh let's see what else is there i think that's about it folks again live stream is up and running um let's hope it stays up and running but if for some reason the strings have to be pulled by someone again then we'll fire it back up hope everyone has a great night and we will chat you guys Sometime tomorrow. Have a good night.